Sometimes it's the beginner concepts that become the most controversial. You can hear basics a million times to the point where it becomes even funny. Ha, ha, ha. Wanna hear a joke? What's your favorite, indica or sativa? Still waiting for the joke? It ain't no joke. You have your favorite pot smoke, and then I prove that it's fake and make sure it's broke. First off, bars. Secondly, am I questioning indica and sativa's validity? I'm simply asking if the so-called differences between indica and sativa are distinct. If it is, I think it's time we investigate if that distinction is significant. And to go a step further, let's see if indica and sativa are even real. Q intro. Are indica and sativa strains distinct? They have distinct sizes, shapes, colors, and effects, right? All of which you can learn more about in this video below. But the easiest way to settle this would be looking at genetics. What does DNA say? Or rather, what do the experts say? The presence of DNA is one thing, but DNA itself can be interpreted. One day you sneeze while walking by a crime scene, and next thing you know, you're wearing an ankle monitor to your graduation. While some studies suggest the genetic differences between the two are detectable, others argue that these genetic differences might not be as clear-cut as previously believed. A study published in the journal Critical Reviews in Plant Sciences analyzed the genomes of 340 cannabis strains and did find genetic differences between indica and sativa. The scientists concluded that there were three distinct genetic clusters between three cannabis types all the way down to the genetic level. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. We're very close to one million. One million. <laughs> of course you'll find differences in genetics if you look hard enough. It can't be that easy. If it was, it'd be my ex. Wow, that was mean. We need to look at whether or not the genetic basis is significant enough, and if the names we used are appropriately placed. If there are lines between kinds, they're certainly blurred. Well, you know, we have hybrids now. A blending of the groups. But if we're considering everything here a spectrum, when does blue become green or green become yellow? We're limited. I'm limited. I know there's some lady out there losing her mind because I've never heard of chartreuse or seafoam or any of that made up shit. Actually, upon seeing this, I believe I am familiar with seafoam. I see someone new and I foam an opinion about who they are based on appearances. But limiting our terminology to indica and sativa and everything else just being a hybrid, there's a problem. The Journal of Cannabis Sativa Botany and Biotechnology did find genetic distinctions between these groups, but they confirmed that the terminology to describe the groups was largely sloppy and inconsistent. It's not so much that genetics are the problem, there are delineations that exist. It's that the names have different borders than the genes we're seeing. If you know your strain history, oh, congratulations. If you don't, you can get some great information here. But to summarize, looking at the life history of cannabis sativa, this guy, refers to plants of a Central Asian and then Indian heritage, and the descendants that moved southeast into Asia, into Africa, and even into parts of the Americas. Indica would refer to Afghani-based lineages. These are from northern India and into the greater regions of Central Asia. But these names Indica and Sativa were coined by scientists like Linnaeus and Lamarck, and they don't fall in line with what we see genetically. The name borders and genetic borders are not a match. All right, that settles it. We need new terms. Or maybe, just maybe, the terms aren't the problem. The real problem. Yes, cannabis is so tricky. Tricky in that you have a plant with high genetic variation, high genetic crossover that reproduces by wind. It grows like crazy and it needs a lot of very meticulous cultivation to get the active ingredients that we need. So while the wild types of cannabis and the reefer greenery that they were referring to in the 1700s, literally the 1700s, was fine for the time, it does not apply to the cannabis that you and I could go out and buy in any market. The ends of the indica sativa spectrum have essentially become a myth or a concept. In what is generally available, there are no pure indicas or pure sativrids. They are hybrids. 
And the hybrids are hybrids of hybrids. So what do the labels on your cannabis product actually mean? In 2021, the prestigious scientific journal Nature published a study highlighting distinction, hybridization, and environmental factors, and most of all, consumer perception. They looked at the terpenes, the cannabinoids, and the genotypes of over 100, 100,000 polymorphisms and found that indica and sativa labeled samples are genetically indistinct from one another. But what they did find was for cannabis products, the labeling tended to be based on one or two variations in terpenes. In the 40 measured cannabis chemicals, 12 were strongly correlated with the decision on whether to label it indica or sativa. The strongest being myrcene and guayal. And when these two were found in high enough amounts in particular, it was generally labeled an indica, regardless of the actual lineage. So what we know is that generally cannabis labeling is based off of one or two terpenes, but they do have an effect on things like the effects or the aroma. Aromas that the customer often correlates with indica and sativa in their mind. So is this an issue of branding? Well, kind of. Many of these terpenes still have an effect that tilt this hybrid towards indica or sativa-like effects. So it seems that detecting the smell of these terpenes is kind of the new proxy that's used, used in absence of just genetic testing. It may not give an accurate representation of the genes or even an acceptable representation of the genes. And it certainly doesn't explain the lineage. But in this brave new world of cannabis, it's as close as we can realistically get in this new world of hybrids. Years of hybridization, cultivation, and of course, consumer preference. So are indica and sativa real? No. And yes. But if you find the effects, sense, and experience that are in line with your preferences, a rose by any other name is still just as sweet. But recreating how we define cannabis can and still will be a process. But till then, if you want to stick with something fake, there's always chartreuse. See you next time.